Hi guys, this is Norm, and here I am today with a work in progress update on my Leopard C2 Maxis from Tacom. Uh, I'm going to be listing a couple of errors I found during the build and my first impression on where I stand right now. It looks like it's finished, but it, there's quite a few little detailed parts to glue on still. And uh, I want to do an update before basically the thing is painted. So I'm going to start with the bottom. I'll go all the way down to the bottom chassis. And uh, <clears throat> first and last time I show you this working suspension. I don't really like it. I find it uh, to be a gimmick, really. Uh, people say, oh, it's good for diorama. Sure. But we live with this kind of stuff. Uh, without it actually uh, for over 50 years and people found ways to move the suspension arm the way they like for a specific thing the nice thing about the tracks uh, they are fully movable from Oroshi uh, you need uh, to basically once you start them to form a methodology how you're going to assemble them there's like uh, three parts per shoe uh, two end connectors and a guide horn all f free of any glue what keeps this track flexible and workable is these rubber, rubberized uh, end connectors. And once you start uh, assembling it, it goes well. I think I got about maybe 82 to 84 shoes per side. I'm not too sure. So uh, work carefully because you don't have a lot of spares if you break your links. So I would sand them once you separate them from the sprue. Do not sand, sand them. Uh, horizontally from uh, let's say you have the two squares in your fingers turn them so you send them the lengthwise okay like basically like this way do not send them up and down because the pin will break and then you will break your shoe so uh, yeah go lengthwise so it gives you more plastic to hold to and uh, once they're cleaned up the assembly goes very fast just make sure your end connectors are facing the proper way the it looks like a B okay a flat end and then two little round uh, embossment okay so the the B part or the the two round parts go against the the ground and the flat part of the B is on the inside of the track okay so just remember that and to ease uh, the look uh, when you take them off the sprue the end connectors have a little bar uh, it's pretty hard to shave so if you have a little uh, bar on the ends just flip it so it faces inward so you won't see it you'll always have the nice edge of the uh, the mold on the outside I have a piece of up armor on the front glasses and that's about it for the lower chassis uh, a detail here on these uh, toe, uh, toe uh, attachments the parts named in the instructions will make you glue them facing inwards so they'll be toe in and that is wrong so you take this part in the instructions and you glue it here and you do that with the opposite and then your uh, hooks will actually be facing outwards and which is the proper way okay do you see how they stand they stand like going outwards and that's how they should be in real life the instructions are wrong uh, next we move to the upper hall uh, you can see here two little white patches and then more white stuff here I had to sand the hinges on the storage boxes uh, because the fit on the boxes was not great so trying to sand in between was too hard so I sand everything complete put putty and replicated the hinges using a little strip of styrene no big deal there on the front the upper fender uh, Maxis armor did not match the front of the upper glasses it just by we're talking like 0.5 millimeter and this is I just slipped a very thin piece of styrene in, in the crack and then shaved it to fit the next problem is these two uh, vents I don't know what they are they, they are a heater or some sort of uh, air filtration system but they need a um, a photo etch and that's what I'm going to talk about now I'm going to show it close first so you understand what I'm talking about you see there's a line following the edge you see that 
So on photo edge, usually a line like this is either a detail or it's a fold line. And if it was on this side, it will indicate it should fold inward towards you. That's usually what a line means on photo edge. It should have been made on the other side because this tiny strip, it's like one millimeter, maybe less, needs to fold outward, away from the details. In the instructions, there's no mention of that whatsoever, and I'm going to try to bring it close to the camera. This piece, I'm going to bring it up close. This piece should be going inward, like on the inside of this uh, piece of armored shield. And then the lip would actually fold on top of the wedge where you see those bolt details. It won't touch the bolt details, so you don't have to shave those. So I'm going to turn around and show you what I did on this side. You can tell that the, the strip is folded over. See, you see it this way. There's no instructions, nothing in the instructions telling you to do this. I had to find a, a set of pictures uh, taken by Dan Hayes, I think his name is. Really, really a good guy. And uh, at the tip of this corner I could see that the piece of metal was wrapped around and that's what gave me the, the, the idea I said it has to be it because I was about to glue it straight up like many people have done on the internet I've seen them and they haven't folded so it sticks up and I said there's no way on a tank you would have a piece of steel it's almost like a razor edge sticking up it makes just no sense okay so by researching it a little bit more, I found the error in the instruction. And just to let you know, guys, it has to be folded uh, on top of this wedge. So it's easy. You take a pair of uh, flat tweezers or your bending machine, and then you fold it uh, towards the inside. OK, so on this one, it'll be on the shiny side. Usually, when you have photo wedge like this, this fold line should have been on the inside and it would have been a lot a lot easier. So I'm going to back up. Okay, so let's do it quickly. Next problem was with the turret. Uh, first of all, if you are not built yours, haven't built yours, do not glue this part during the sequence. Okay, just assemble it and leave it aside until you, you're doing the upper armor cheek uh, Maxis armor add-ons because you need to basically tweak this left and right to match the uh, your your armor. Right now I'm about 0.5 millimeter off to one side and it really shows and it's annoying. Also the sequence and then you should not be able to do this but I'm going to do it anyway. In the sequence they want you to glue these uh, our space spacers and also mounting points. And that's the only ones they give you, but it should it should be all over the turret, by the way. But um, the two with the locator holes are the only ones that have locator holes or points, anchor points, onto the turret, like like a groove like this. So you glue those on, and then they should, in theory, match these locator pins on these two cheek bone um, armor plates. So, okay, here from where I'm touching to here is one piece okay on both sides then you have a middle section here and then you have the bustle this is where they join the assembly sequence is you glue these cheeks uh, armor blocks onto there and then you add another piece and then you add the bustle if there is no way it will it will work okay first of all these two pieces here and here don't fit well so you have to sand until you get a perfect joint and then all of these things here, the, the bottom two here, and then this one, and then these two other uh, are like glue points basically. They don't even touch. So I'm going to bring it back to where it should be. Give me a second. There we go. If I turn it around, they don't even touch the uh, up armor. You'll see the light will go right through. It's not touching there, not touching there. It touch nowhere okay see they don't even touch whatsoever there's no glue points and then the rear ones here for the bustles from the top they don't even touch either you see right through 
So the only thing right now holding it in place is this middle uh, line. So I'm going to take it off again. See that line here? That's the only thing that actually attach this entire section. It's a little disappointing and uh, I'll have to add a piece of styrene on these three attachment point here for until I, I touch the turret. And I probably will have to add little discs of styrene until I get the cheeks uh, armor uh, to actually touch uh, those ones to get a good uh, anchor point. It's a little disappointing and these CAD designs they should have seen that the two assemblies were not even touching. So it's a little uh, yeah annoying actually. And the sequence they wanted you to do is glue this there on these two locator pins and they won't even touch so how can you glue it? It just won't touch. So that's uh, keep that in mind. So what I did is I assembled all these parts and then I made them fit nice and flush. And what I did is because this is a, a glue section, the the gap was deeper than the others. So I rescribe all these other panels deeper a little bit to match the joint so they, they look similar. And uh, I made sure this was nice and flat when it glued. And uh, now I know it it looks the part right so that's the only uh, bad point about this up armor if you were to build the c2 alone without the uh, up armor I'm sh it'd be great you know like it would be lesser problems so right now as you see it I'm almost done um, got a couple more details jerry cans and uh, combat uh, other goodies to good on glue on and uh, I should be ready for paint pretty soon. But I have to slow down just to make sure that all the little details are taken care of. But uh, remember, photo etch, okay, that's it's very important. Uh, this to fold over so you don't end up with a, uh, a sharp edge on these uh, inlets or exhaust. I don't know what they are exactly. But um, yeah, that's, a, that's the tech on experience for me so far. So... Hopefully the future or other kits that they release are uh, less prone to have errors like that. So you guys take care and have a good weekend. Bye bye.